Cougar Baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Pinch hitter for the Cougars. It's going to be Cooper Vest. Coming in for his first at bat, he will face Ethan Bates. So Vest will be hitting in the nine spot for right now. And he looks at ball one from Ethan Bates. And I want to update you on how they scored a specific play. The play at the plate has now been scored as an E3, a throwing error on Wilk. And I'm trying to figure out where the throwing error was. 1-0 pitch in there for strike one. Now, full disclosure, I'm obviously behind the plate. I saw a good throw. It looked to me as if Ball was able to get the ball in his glove and moved over for the tag, and then the ball was dislodged. I did not see a throwing error, but that's what they've they've scored it as a throwing error on Jacob Wilk. So an E3 and the first error of the ball game goes to the Cougars. The 1-1 pitch, foul back, and it's now... Well, they've got two and one. Two balls and one strike to count. And now they've got it. I was right. The one, two. Fouled out of play. The count stays one ball and two strikes. I knew I was right. Cougar deficit is now three. Five, two. Louisiana Tech in the lead. The one-two pitch to Vest. Another foul ball off to the left side, and the count will remain one and two. We'll see if Cooper Vest stays in the game and at what position he goes into. We may have a new catcher, and, and Coop may end up going to first as a defensive replacement. We'll see. One-two pitch. Now two balls and two strikes. Cooper having to sit out all of last year after having shoulder surgery. It's great to have him back. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Vest. And it's a strikeout. It does get away from Corona. They'll throw down to first to throw out Vest. And it's out number one. So Vest is retired, and we're back to the top of the order. Ozzie Pratt grounded out, struck out looking, and then was hit in the head in the fifth inning. So Vest with the strikeout. Base is empty, one out, and first pitch to Ozzie is high for ball one. BYU is a team hitting 217 in this game. This has been the outlier in terms of that. Swing and a miss, one and one on the fastball from Ethan Bates. This is what Coach Pratt was talking about in our pregame interview. You know, we were talking about how hot the bats had been, but he's like, look, that doesn't mean every game's going to be like this. Foul ball right above the dugout for the Bulldogs. So just because you've had hot bats in the first three games doesn't mean it's going to be there in game four. And Got to keep fighting. There's certainly plenty of time, and these guys are certainly more than capable of making up three runs. Ozzie pops it up, and... High in the air, over the screen, it will get out of play. Corona thought he may have a play on it, but he ran out of real estate. Instead, he'll be handed a new baseball, and we'll throw it back out to his pitcher, Ethan Bates. It's not like the Bulldogs are scorching things. They're hitting 227 as a team, but early walks allowed them to get on base. They're only one of ten with runners in scoring position. 1-2 pitch, misses, now 2-2. Two and two. They were just able to take advantage of some of those early walks. And BYU hasn't been able to, uh, to recover just yet. Still plenty of time. The 2-2 two, two pitch. 
Fouled off to the right side this time. Really good at bat from Ozzie Pratt, making Bates work here, not giving in. There's one out here in the top of the seventh. We'll get you pitching numbers in just a moment. Pratt fouls that one off. Big O Tires presents on the rubbers. We look at both teams' pitching numbers. Look at Bates right now. He's pitched an inning and two-thirds, given up one hit, one walk, and four strikeouts. He came in relief of the starter, Reed Smith. We'll get to the Cougar numbers in a moment. 2-2 two -two pitch. And it's strikeout looking on the inside part of the plate. Back-to-back punch-outs for Ethan Bates. And there's now two away. And the bases are empty. BYU pitching numbers. Mason Olsen came in after Carter Smith went an inning in two-thirds. Olsen has pitched four and a third, given up four hits, one run. It was not earned, and he struck out four. Those are your pitching numbers brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Luke Anderson is also going to come in as a pinch hitter, so he will go into left field, and he looks at strike one from Bates. So the day is done for Tate Gamble. Anderson will go into left. And the 0-1 pitch misses. The count now 1-1. One and one. Luke started the first two games of this series. Did not play in game three. And now coming in midway through here in game four. Swing and a miss, strike two. One ball, one strike, and two outs. Bases empty. The crowd comes alive here at the Love Shack in Ruston. The one-two pitch. Fouled off. Spoiled by Anderson. Luke's one of those guys that the coaching staff so excited to have in this program. Young, athletic, going to be a great one. One-two pitch, chopped foul, one and two the count. As we've mentioned in previous broadcasts, the 2021 Utah Gatorade Player of the Year out of Snow Canyon High School in Southern Utah. Really good outfielder, good at the plate. He's going to be a good one. Bates delivers the one-two to Anderson. High fly ball into shallow left, and it's Myers moving up to make the catch, and the Cougars are retired. One, two, three in the top of the seventh. It's time for the seventh inning stretch, brought to you by Mountain America, official credit union, of BYU Athletics. Back after this, Cougars Trail 5-2 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Bottom of the seventh inning, Mason Olsen back out for another inning of work. First pitch is a ball to Cole McConnell. McConnell 0 for 2 with a walk. No balls and one strike. The 0-1 pitch. We've also got a new catcher. Peyton Cole is catching. So Wilkes stays at first. 1-1 one -one pitch. Hits sharply into center field. Moving back. Hits the base of the wall. And Cole Gamble bobbles it. He'll throw to third. It's a leadoff double. If that had been about two feet higher, that would have been gone. It, it hit a couple feet below the wall and bounced down. That was going to be a double whether or not Cole was able to bring that in or not. That didn't affect the end result. Quickly got it out, and that may be it for Mason Olsen. It will. We've got a pitching change. We'll go through all the changes when we come back. This pitching change brought to you 
by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Back to Rustin after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. The new pitcher for the BYU Cougars is number nine, Peyton Goobler. This is the second appearance in this series for Peyton. Peyton came in in game one of the doubleheader on Saturday. He pitched two-thirds, gave up two hits, one run. It was earned, and he struck out two, so he's making his second plate appearance. And he will face Dalton Davis. Moments ago, a leadoff double from Cole McConnell here in the bottom of the seventh. It's 5-2 Louisiana Tech. And Goobler's first pitch inside, ball one. Goobler had offers from Texas A&M, TCU, Texas, UCLA, and others. The Cougars beat out all of those schools for his services, and they are pumped to have him. I hear from his dad, Casey, on social media. Always appreciate him commenting on things I post. So shout out to Casey Goobler. They'll throw down to second base just to keep McConnell honest. The 1-0 pitch in the dirt. Good block there by Peyton Cole, who's in at catcher. The 2-0 pitch. Now three balls and a strike. The Cougars' deficit is three runs. We're in the bottom of the seventh. And the Bulldogs looking to add more. They have a runner at second, nobody out. The 3-0 pitch from Goobler. Good pitch. Outside part of the plate gets the call. Strike one. Five, two. The Bulldogs with the lead, and it's ball four. And the first two have reached a double, and now a walk will bring in the designated hitter, Philip Matulia, who's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Matulia is just 1 for 10 in this series. He's also struck out four times. Three of those have been today. The first pitch to Matulia behind him and it rolls all the way to the backstop. Both runners will advance and are now in scoring position with nobody out. That pitch was inside. It bounced away from Cole and now the entire Cougar infield will meet on the mound for a quick discussion. It's a quick conversation. Everybody moving back to their positions defensively. Different situation, however, when you got first and second, you're obviously hoping for the double play. Now second and third. A little bit different. Want to make sure everybody's on the same page. One ball, no strikes is the count. The 1 0. Matulia pulls that ball down the right field line, and that will hit the scoreboard. A three run home run from Philip Matulia, and it's 8 2 Bulldogs. He was bound and determined to break. The 0 for 3 and 3 strikeout day. And he did it with a 3 run blast. 8 2 Bulldogs. That'll clear the bases. Still nobody out. The catcher, George Corona, now at the plate. Corona, 
one for three. And he pulls the ball into left field. Moving back at the wall. Can't get it is Anderson. That will ricochet away. And that'll be a double for George Corona. And the fans and the Bulldog dugout, they are loving it. That'll bring in number six, the left fielder, Adarius Miles. He's been on base twice, hit by pitch in the second and a single in the sixth. Nobody out and a runner at second. Already an 8-2 lead for the home team. First pitch inside part of the plate. Goobler gets the call. Good pitch. Strike one. The 0-1 pitch. On its way from Goobler. Inside, ball one. The count now, one ball and one strike. BYU took game one of the series. They led in game two, six to two. They would lose eight, six. And then BYU would win game three on Saturday. One, one pitch, and that was behind Myers. It did not hit him, but Corona will advance to third as the ball rolled all the way to the backstop. Two and one the count. The Bulldogs trying to split this series two and two. Two one pitch. Misses now three and one to Adarius Miles. Wearing number six and batting sixth in the order for La Tech. Three one pitch. And he lost him. Runners on the corners now with nobody out. The inning began with a double from Cole McConnell, a walk to Dalton Davis, then a three run home run from Philip Matulia. George Corona. Hit a double with the bases empty. He advanced to third. The ball got away from Peyton Cole. And now Adarius Miles earning a walk. And we're going to have a pitching change for the BYU Cougars. Another PZ Printing pitching change. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. Back with the new Cougar Hurler. When we return, 8-2 is the lead for La Tech on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's Jason Shepard. Welcome back to J.C. Love Field at Pat Patterson Park. Jason Shepard with you. The lead is 8-2 in favor of the home team, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs over the BYU Cougars. The new pitcher of record making his BYU debut. Number 45 is Sam Beck. Beck can play in the infield, also a left-handed pitcher. and Obviously, he's going to get his first chance as a BYU Cougar on the mound. He comes in with runners on the corners and nobody out. BYU down six runs. They're also being out hit 8-5. So our first opportunity to see Sam Beck. He'll face Safford. First pitch to Safford. The hit and run was on. The runner was moving down to second. That ball into left field. The glove to Anderson is made for out number one. The runner will tag from third and score. That is Corona. So the out is made by Anderson in left. Corona tags and scores. So it's 9-2 Louisiana Tech with a runner at first and one out. Logan McLeod will now bat. So a 
sack fly RBI for Safford. They'll throw over to first. McLeod tonight walked, struck out looking, and reached on a fielder's choice. The pitch from Beck outside, ball one. No games tomorrow. We're traveling three hours south down to Lafayette. Tomorrow is Mardi Gras, so that should be interesting. Another throw over to first. Everyone has been telling us, hey, have you ever experienced Mardi Gras before? And all of us will know. And everyone <laughs> would say, well, good luck. So apparently we're all in for something. The 1-0 pitch. Good pitch from Beck. Strike one. One ball and one strike. We'll begin the four-game series against the Rage and Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette on Wednesday. No doubleheaders. We'll play uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The Wednesday, Thursday, Friday games are all 6 o'clock local time, 5 Mountain. And then an earlier game on Saturday so that we can get our flight home Saturday night. Obviously, all the games will be right here on the new skin BYU Sports Network, and we appreciate you tuning in to BYU Baseball. It is a pleasure to be giving it to you tonight here over the new skin BYU Sports Network. Slow roller to third, Deming, nice defensive play and a great pick by Wilk at first. They'll get the out, the runner does advance to second, but now two away. So 5-3 on the put out. Colton Hedgewood. We'll see if he can keep this inning going. Four runs have already crossed the plate for the home team. La Tech's lead is 9-2 over the visiting Cougars from Provo. BYU's two runs came in the second inning and zeros on the scoreboard since. We'll talk with head coach Trent Pratt after the game. Get his thoughts. Swing and a miss. Fastball to Hedgewood from Sam Beck. Runner at second, two outs. The 0-1 pitch to Hedgewood. Fouled out of play, and Beck jumps ahead. The hitter, 0-2. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second. The 0-2 pitch, high and outside. One and two, the count. Hedgewood, one for two. Also a walk. His one was a double in the fourth inning. Beck sets, looks at second. Does it again, now delivers the one-two pitch. Spoiled by Hedgewood, fouls it off to the left. And Beck will have to throw the one-two again. And now timeout is called. Cole and Beck will go out and talk briefly in front of the mound. That meeting is over, and both players back to their positions. Two lead for Tech. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Beck on the mound, facing Hedgewood. And the pitch inside bounces away from Cole. No throw down to third as Myers now at third. Alertly on the move as soon as that got away. And it really didn't bounce far away from Cole, but Myers has such great speed that. There was no point in trying to throw down to third. He was going to steal that bag. So two balls, two strikes, and two outs, but now a runner at third. 
And the pitch, low, and it's a full count. And Myers is trying to get Beck's attention on the mound. And with Beck as a righty, he's looking right at third. And the payoff pitch, ground ball to second base. Pratt over to first. In time, the inning is over, but the Bulldogs add four to their lead, and it's now 9-2. Louisiana Tech, the Cougar Bats, with some work to do as we head to the eighth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's Jason Shepard. Top of the eighth inning, BYU needs seven runs to tie over the next two innings. They trail 9-2, and they'll face a new pitcher. Landon Tompkins makes his second appearance in this series. He actually picked up the win in Game 2 on Saturday, which was Game 1 of the doubleheader. He pitched two innings, allowed only two hits, no runs, and struck out two. So seeing him for the second time. And leading off the top of the eighth is Cole Gamble. So the three, four, and five hitters, Gamble, Deming, and Sapiti, do up for the Cougars. And the first pitch from Tompkins is taken for strike one. The 0-1 pitch. Ground ball to first. Underhand throw to Tompkins. Covering first. He steps on the bag. And Cole Gamble is retired. 3-1 on the put out. So Austin Deming. Has a single. He'll come to the plate with one out and the base is empty. Ryan Sapiti in the on-deck circle. The one, two, and three hitters will bat for Louisiana Tech in the bottom of the inning as Deming takes strike one from Logan Tompkins. Or excuse me, Landon Tompkins. I was looking at Logan McLeod's name. Landon Tompkins. Oh, one pitch. Misses. And it is not Tompkins. It's T-O-M-K-I-N-S, just in case you were wondering. One ball, one strike. And the one-one pitch outside. Now two and one to Austin Deming, the Cougar third baseman. Two one pitch. High and inside, three and one. Hey, right now BYU needs base runners. We got time to play. They need seven to tie. Three one pitch. Ooh. I'm with uh, Deming. He was ready to take his bag, thinking it was ball four, but Tompkins got the call on the outside part of the plate, and the count is full three and two. I'm with you, Austin. Payoff pitch to Deming, and he stays alive, just gets a piece. We'll do it again. Deming versus Tompkins. 3-2, the pitch on its way. Ground ball to short. Safford with the throw. It's low but a good catch there by Davis for out number two, and the first two have been retired here in the top of the eighth. So with the bases empty, Ryan Sapiti will bat. He is two for three with two singles. Nine-two, the lead for the home team. First pitch to Sapiti, strike one. After we're done here in the state of Louisiana, next week, four games in Utah County. Tuesday will be at Utah Valley, and then three at home against Omaha. That pitch fouled and fouled hard. Off to the right side, 
I could hear that, and that ricocheted back into the field of play, 0-2. And, and it looks like if Sapiti can get on base, Josh Cowden will be a pinch hitter. The 0-2 pitch, strike three looking, and the Cougars go in order in the top of the eighth. It's 9-2 La Tech heading to the home half of the eighth inning on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. New pitcher, Peyton Cole, is now pitching for the BYU Cougars. I believe Chase Peterson is now the catcher. So Peyton Cole is the new pitcher for the BYU Cougars in the bottom of the eighth inning. Brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Facing Brody Drost. And Drost takes the first pitch high in the air into center field. And that ball is gone. It hits above the wall. Hits the batter's eye. And it's a solo home run to lead off the bottom of the eighth. And it's 10-2 Tech. Ten runs and I believe ten hits. I don't think they've added the extra hit on the scoreboard. Ground ball to Wilk at first. He'll take it himself off the bat of Cole McConnell. So one away. But 10-2 is the lead. What we're seeing here in game four from Louisiana Tech is what we saw from the Cougars in the first three games of the series. Even though they lost one of them, this was the type of offense that BYU is putting out there. This is really the first time we've seen this in favor of the Bulldogs. Dalton Davis takes ball one from Peyton Cole. The 1-0 pitch. Now 2-0. and oh. 2-0. Check swing. He didn't go, but they're going to call it strike one. Good pitch there from Peyton Cole. The 2-1, low and outside, now three balls and one strike. The 3-1 pitch, popped up into shallow right. Sapiti up to make the catch and two away. So two outs, bases are empty. The six, seven, and eight hitters do up in the top of the ninth when we get there. We will see who hits in place. Had the last at the top of the eighth continued, it looked like there was going to be a pinch hitter for Safaya Maui. We'll see if somebody hits in that spot when we reach the ninth inning. And Philip Matulia hits a high fly ball right to. The shortstop, Brock Watkins, for out number three. We will head to the top of the ninth. The Cougars need eight to tie, nine to go ahead. Can they do it? Find out when we come back. Top of the ninth next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's Jason Shepard. Josh Cowden will lead off as a pinch hitter and a swing and a miss as Josh makes his 2023 debut. He's facing Landon Tompkins and the 0-1 pitch. And he takes strike two. BYU trailing 10 to two. They've been out hit nine to five. Brock Watkins due up next for BYU. Let's go out there, string some hits together and see what you can do here. The 0-2 pitch inside, good take, ball one. The wind has finally died down. The flag is not waving at all. 
No balls, two strikes. The 0-2 pitch. Strike three looking on the outside part of the plate. Out number one. And we will have a pinch hitter for Brock Watkins. Easton Jones will pinch hit. We saw Easton on Saturday. First pitch to Jones, chopped foul, strike one. BYU, two more outs to work with. They need eight to tie here in the top of the ninth inning. If they can't do it, it'll be a split between these two teams in the opening series. And the 0-1 pitch, breaking ball in for strike two. O2 2 pitch, ball one. And Cutter Clausen is due to hit next, so three straight pinch hitters here in the top of the ninth for BYU. 1-2 pitch, Easton lifts it high in the air to center field. McConnell makes the catch, and BYU down to their final out. Cougars took game one of the series. La Tech came back, took game two. BYU took the series lead, taking game three. And unless something happens here with two outs in the top of the ninth, each team is going to take every other game. High and outside to Cutter Clausen. Stay with us. We'll have post-game stats for you, and we'll talk with the head coach of the Cougars, Trent Pratt before we sign off here from Ruston. Base is empty, two outs, the 1-0 pitch. Outside, 2-0. And they're going to have a quick conversation. George is going to walk the ball out and talk with Tompkins very quick. He's already back behind home plate. Whatever he needed to say to Tompkins was very brief. 10-2, LaTeX with the lead. 2-0 pitch to Cutter. Strike one. The crowd coming alive. 2-1 pitch. High chopper. Tompkins takes it. Throws to first. In time. And that will end the ball game. It's a split. Each team winning two games in the four-game series here at J.C. Love Field at Pat Patterson Park. Your final in game four, the series finale, Louisiana Tech 10, BYU 2. Back with some final stats, and we'll talk with the coach, Trent Pratt, when we return to Ruston on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.